The sun has not yet kissed the horizon. The world is still, and there's a quiet that envelops everything. It's at this moment, this very second, that champions are made. Not in the glaring light of day, but in the serene embrace of the dawn. This is where our journey begins, with a simple yet profound decision to wake up and grind. You see, life, in its infinite complexity, offers us a canvas, but it hands us the brush only when we decide to take it. Every stroke, every color we choose, starts with the resolve to get up and paint our masterpiece. It's about embracing the moment when the alarm clock sounds, not as a siren of annoyance, but as a trumpet call to greatness. This isn't about just moving through the motions, it's about seizing the day with a purpose that burns so fiercely within us, guiding every action, every decision. But what drives a person to leap out of bed, ready to tackle the challenges that await? It's vision, a clear, compelling vision of who they want to be, what they wish to achieve. Picture yourself five, ten years from now. What do you see? Is it a reflection filled with achievements, growth, and fulfillment? Or is it clouded by what could have been? The difference lies in what we do in those early hours when the world is yet to awaken. Let me share a secret with you. One that successful people around the globe have whispered for generations. The grind, the relentless pursuit of excellence, starts with a single decision to make the most of each day. It's a commitment not just to be better than we were yesterday, but to pave a path toward a future we've always dreamed of. This isn't about chasing the fleeting shadows of success. It's about building a legacy brick by brick with our sweat our resilience, and our unwavering determination. Now I want you to pause for a moment and ask yourself, what am I willing to do today to draw one step closer to my dreams? It's a simple question, yet it holds the power to transform your life. It's not about monumental leaps, but the small consistent steps we take every day. And it begins now, in this moment, with the courage to push beyond our limits, to challenge the status quo, and to carve out our destiny with the choices we make. Remember, the road to greatness is paved with challenges, setbacks, and moments of doubt. But it's also lined with victories, learning, and growth. It requires a heart that's brave enough to start, and strong enough to persevere. A mind that's sharp and eager to learn, and a spirit that's resilient, ready to rise time and time again. So let this morning be different. Let it be the start of something extraordinary where you decide to wake up and grind, to step into the arena of your dreams armed with nothing but your passion, your vision, and your unwavering commitment to excellence. Today is your day to shine, to show the world the strength of your resolve and the depth of your desire to achieve greatness. The brilliance of a new day offers more than just light. It provides clarity, illuminating the vast landscape of possibilities that lie ahead of us. This clarity isn't just about seeing, it's about envisioning, about crafting a vision so vivid, so compelling, it propels us forward with an unstoppable momentum. It's here, in the quiet dawn of possibility, where defining your vision becomes not just a task, but a mission. Imagine standing at the edge of a forest, the path before you veiled in mist. Each path represents a choice, a direction your life could take. Now picture the sun's rays piercing through the fog, revealing the golden path that leads you to your dreams. This is the power of a clear vision. It dispels doubt, lights up your path, and guides your steps with purpose and intention. Your vision, my friends, is more than a dream. It's a beacon that guides you through the stormiest seas, a compass when you find yourself lost in the wilderness of life. But how, you might ask, do we forge this vision? It starts with the courage to ask yourself not just what you want, but who you want to be. It's about looking beyond the horizon, beyond the immediate gratifications, to what truly sets your soul on fire. Crafting your vision is akin to painting on the canvas of tomorrow. Each brushstroke represents your hopes, your values, your aspirations. Begin with broad strokes, outlining the grand picture of your life. Where are you? Who's by your side? What fills your days? Don't just scratch the surface. Dive deep. Peel back the layers of your heart and soul, and discover the dreams that lie dormant, waiting for your courage to awaken them. Now, refine your vision. Add color, depth, and detail. If you see yourself as a leader, what kind? If you envision a life of adventure, where does it take you? 
This isn't about vague wishes. It's about crystal clear, vibrant visions that stir your heart every time you close your eyes. Write them down, not as fleeting thoughts, but as declarations of your future. This act alone moves them from the ethereal realm of imagination into the tangible world of possibility. A vision without action is like a star without light. Beautiful, but distant and cold. Herein lies our challenge and our promise. To breathe life into our vision every day. It means waking up with determination, going to bed with satisfaction, and filling every moment in between with the relentless pursuit of that golden path we've envisioned. It's a commitment to turn every obstacle into a stepping stone, every setback into a lesson, and every success into a milestone. Remember, the fabric of your vision will be tested. You'll face doubts, fears, and countless trials. But it's in these moments, when the path seems darkest, that your vision shines brightest. Hold it close, like a torch in the night, guiding you step by step towards the dawn of your fulfillment. And so, as we embrace the grind, do so with a vision that burns so brightly it cannot be ignored. A vision that doesn't just call to you, but roars with the force of your entire being behind it. This is the start, a journey not just towards achieving goals but towards living a life of purpose and passion. A journey that we embark on not just with the dream of what we'll achieve, but with a clearer vision of who we'll become in the process. Our next step takes us into the heart of transforming our vision into reality. Imagine for a moment that each goal you set is like a lighthouse, guiding you through the fog towards your destined shore. The power of goal setting is not just in defining what we aim to achieve, but in illuminating the path that leads us there. It's about turning the intangible into the tangible, the dream into the achievable. Explore how setting precise, actionable goals can be the bridge between where you are now and where you want to be. Consider the story of a young artist, passionate and driven yet adrift in the vast sea of creativity without direction. It was not until she learned to set clear goals for her art, specific exhibitions to participate in, a number of paintings to complete, a style to master, that her path became clear. With each goal she set and met, she not only moved closer to her vision but also built the confidence and skills necessary for her journey. This is the essence of goal setting. It's not merely about achieving outcomes but about who we become in the process. Setting goals is akin to planting seeds in a garden. Each seed represents a goal, a future achievement that lies dormant, awaiting our effort and care to grow. But it is not enough to simply scatter these seeds to the wind. They must be planted with intention, watered with action, and nurtured with persistence. As with gardening, the fruits of our labor and goal setting are not immediate. They require time, dedication, and the resilience to face the challenges that arise. Yet the harvest they yield is abundance. It brings us closer to our vision, enriches our lives, and empowers us to reach further than we ever thought possible. But how do we set goals that truly matter, that resonate with our deepest aspirations? It begins with reflection with turning inward to understand what ignites our passion and drives us forward. From this place of clarity, we set goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. These are not just words. They are the framework that transforms vague wishes into clear, actionable objectives. They compel us to move, to act, and to persevere, even when the path ahead is steep. Now imagine setting a goal so compelling that it pulls you forward, that the thought of achieving it fills you with an irrepressible energy. This is the power of setting meaningful goals. They act as beacons of light in the darkness, guiding us, inspiring us, and pushing us beyond our perceived limits. And with each goal we achieve, we not only move closer to our ultimate vision, but also build a ladder of successes upon which we can climb to heights we once thought unreachable. Yet setting goals is only the beginning. The true challenge lies in the pursuit, in the grind, in the daily commitment to turn our goals into reality. It's in the quiet hours of the morning, in the sacrifices we make, and in the unwavering belief in our ability to achieve what we've set out to do. This commitment, this relentless pursuit, is what separates those who dream from those who achieve. As we delve deeper into the art of goal setting, carry forward the lessons we've learned. Remember that our goals are not just destinations but stepping stones in our journey of growth and self-discovery. They are the milestones that mark our progress, the challenges that test our resolve, and the victories that celebrate our perseverance. And so, as we set our sights on the horizon, do so with a heart full of ambition and a mind focused on our goals. 
Embrace the challenges, learn from the setbacks, and celebrate each step forward, no matter how small. For it is in the pursuit of our goals that we truly find ourselves, that we uncover the strength, the courage, and the determination to achieve our highest aspirations. Emboldened by our vision and guided by our goals, we come face to face with the very essence of achievement. It's in this space where effort meets perseverance that our dreams begin to take shape, morphing from the intangible into milestones of our persistence. Embracing the grind isn't merely a part of the journey, it's the heartbeat of success, the rhythm to which all great achievers march. It's where work ethic and persistence become not just virtues, but the very fuel that propels us forward. Think of the grind as the potter's wheel, and you the clay being shaped and molded by every turn, every pressure applied, every moment spent in the pursuit of mastery. It's a process, sometimes arduous, often demanding, but always transformative. It's about falling in love with the process, with the daily discipline of honing your craft, sharpening your skills, and pushing beyond the boundaries of yesterday's achievements. In this endeavor, our work ethic is our compass, guiding us through the fog of discouragement, the storms of failure, and the calm of routine. It's what gets us up before dawn, ready to tackle the day with zeal, to dive headfirst into our challenges with an unwavering resolve. A strong work ethic doesn't waver in the face of adversity. Instead, it looks adversity in the eye and sees an opportunity to grow, to learn, and to emerge stronger. Persistence, on the other hand, is our anchor, keeping us steadfast in our pursuit, reminding us that the journey to greatness is a marathon, not a sprint. It whispers in our ears during moments of doubt, urging us to take one more step, to try one more time, to persevere through the setbacks and the disappointments. Persistence is the quiet strength that fuels our resilience, enabling us to rise time and again from the ashes of our failures, clothed in the wisdom of our experiences. Imagine now a bridge spanning the chasm between where you are and where you want to be. This bridge is built on the pillars of work ethic and persistence, constructed by your daily efforts, your sacrifices, and your unwavering dedication to your goals. Crossing this bridge requires more than just desire. It demands action, relentless focused action driven by a deep-seated belief in the inevitability of your success. But make no mistake, the grind is not a solitary journey, a lone battle against the odds. Along this path, we're surrounded by fellow travelers, each with their dreams, their struggles, and their triumphs. It's in this community of dreamers and doers that we find inspiration, support, and the shared wisdom of collective experience. Here, we learn the value of mentorship, of lifting each other up, and of the power of collaboration in turning our individual dreams into a collective reality. As we embrace the grind, do so with a sense of purpose, with the knowledge that every effort, no matter how small, brings us closer to our vision. Celebrate not just the milestones, but the effort it takes to reach them. The early mornings, the late nights, the sacrifices, and the unwavering dedication to our craft. For it's in these moments, in the heat of the grind, that our character is forged, our resilience is tested, and our true potential is revealed. In this relentless pursuit of excellence, also be mindful of the journey itself, of the lessons learned, the friendships forged, and the person we become along the way. Find joy in the process, in the daily act of striving for greatness, and in the knowledge that we are not just chasing dreams, but living them. One day, one step, one relentless effort at a time. Woven with threads of determination, resilience, and the ceaseless pursuit of excellence, there emerges a golden thread. One that adds strength, vibrancy, and depth to our endeavors. This thread is continuous learning and growth, an indispensable aspect of our voyage towards realizing our fullest potential. It's in this commitment to never stop learning, to embrace growth as our constant companion, that we unlock the doors to realms of possibility previously unimagined. Consider for a moment the story of the ancient mariners, setting sail into uncharted waters driven by a thirst for discovery. Guided by the stars and learning from the sea, their journey was not just about reaching new lands, but about the transformation that occurred within them as they faced the unknown, adapted to the challenges, and expanded their understanding of the world. Like these intrepid explorers, we too must set sail on a voyage of intellectual and personal discovery, charting our course through the vast oceans of knowledge, skills, and experiences available to us.
This commitment to continuous learning and growth is not merely an academic exercise. It's a way of life. A mindset that sees every experience, every challenge, and every interaction as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to evolve. It's about cultivating a curiosity that knows no bounds, a hunger for knowledge that is never satiated, and a resilience that grows with each passing day. In this age of information, where knowledge is more accessible than ever before, the challenge is not in finding resources, but in choosing where to focus our efforts. It's about discerning which skills are most relevant, which knowledge is most transformative, and which experiences will propel us forward on our journey. This discernment is the compass that guides our learning, ensuring that we invest our time and energy in ways that are aligned with our vision, our goals, and our deepest values. As we embark on this path of continuous learning and growth, do so with intention and purpose. Be strategic in your learning, seeking out mentors who can guide you, communities that can support you, and challenges that can stretch you. Utilize the vast array of books, courses, seminars, and technologies available to you, using them as tools to carve out your unique path to greatness. But also remember that learning is not just about acquisition, but about application. It's about translating knowledge into action, theories into practice, and it's in the doing that learning becomes real, that growth occurs, and that we begin to see the tangible fruits of our labor. This is where true mastery lies, not just in knowing but in being and doing. In this journey of continuous learning and growth, also embrace the role of teaching, sharing your knowledge and insights with others. For in teaching, we reinforce our own learning, we solidify our understanding, and we contribute to the growth of those around us. It's in this exchange of knowledge, this cycle of learning and teaching, that we all rise together, elevating not just ourselves, but our communities our societies, and ultimately, our world. As we forge ahead, carry with you the lessons of the past, the learnings of the present, and the promise of the future. Approach each day with a learner's heart, a seeker's mind, and a doer's hands, ready to absorb, to apply, and to adapt. For it's in this continuous cycle of learning and growth, that we not only achieve our goals but surpass them, not only fulfill our potential, but expand it, and not only live our dreams, but exceed them. As we stand at the juncture between aspiration and realization, between dreaming and achieving, it's imperative to recognize that the journey we've embarked upon is not for the faint-hearted. It's a path laden with challenges, yet it's also strewn with opportunities for growth, learning, and unparalleled success. The essence of making it happen, of transforming our dreams into reality, is encapsulated in the relentless pursuit of our vision. Armed with a solid work ethic, an insatiable desire for continuous learning, and an unwavering commitment to our goals, envision yourself as a sculptor, with your life as the marble block. Each day presents an opportunity to chisel away at the superficial layers, to refine and define, to reveal the masterpiece within. It's a process that demands patience, persistence, and precision. The tools of goal setting, embracing the grind, and continuous learning, are your chisels, shaping your path to greatness. But remember, the sculptor's true power lies not in the tools, but in the vision. The unwavering resolve to see the sculpture not for the block of marble it is, but for the masterpiece it will become. Making it happen is about more than just action. It's about intentional action. It's about aligning your daily tasks with your deepest values and highest aspirations. Recognizing that every choice you make, every effort you exert, is a brushstroke on the canvas of your life, contributing to the grand picture of your destiny. This requires not just hard work but smart work, strategically leveraging your strengths, continually adapting to feedback, and staying the course despite the tempest that may seek to veer you off your path. In this journey, do not underestimate the power of small steps. The mightiest mountains are climbed one step at a time, and the most daunting goals are achieved one task at a time. It's the accumulation of these small, seemingly insignificant actions that leads to monumental achievements. Therefore, pledge to take at least one step every day toward your dreams, no matter how small. For it's in these steps that the path to greatness is paved. Embrace the moments of failure, not as detours on your journey, but as integral parts of the map. Each setback, each obstacle, each failure is replete with lessons that guide you, that make you wiser, stronger, and more resilient. They remind you that the path to success is not a straight line, 
but a winding road filled with lessons to be learned and victories to be earned. Making it happen, turning your dreams into reality, is an art and a science, a symphony of disciplined action, relentless perseverance, and continuous adaptation. It's a dance between dreaming and doing, between learning and applying. Carry with you the lessons you've learned, the insights you've gained, and the resolve you've strengthened. Step into the arena of your dreams with confidence, armed with the knowledge that you possess everything you need within you to make it happen. Let this be not just the end of a discourse but the beginning of a journey, the journey of transformation, achievement, and legacy. Make it happen, not someday, but today and every day henceforth, as you craft your life into the masterpieces they are meant to be. The seventh law of achievement is the law of preparation which states that perfect performance is preceded by painstaking preparation. The mark of a serious person and a true professional in any field is that they take more time to prepare thoroughly than the average person does. The non-serious person or non-professional always attempts to bluff or wing it, trying to get by with a minimum of preparation without realizing that their level of preparation is immediately evident to everyone around them. One of my favorite quotes which has had a powerful effect on shaping my life and attitude, comes from Abraham Lincoln, who said, I shall study and prepare myself, and someday my chance will come. He recognized, as do all great men and women, that painstaking and thorough preparation is the key to the future. The first part of the law of preparation is simply, do your homework. It's the details that trick you up every single time. My friend Joel Weldon gave a wonderful talk entitled Elephants Don't Bite, emphasizing that it's the mosquitoes of life, the small things that tend to be ignored, that cause you the most trouble. No one ever gets bitten by an elephant, but people get bitten by mosquitoes all the time. His message was that if you want to get to the top of your field, you must be fastidious about the little things because, as a minister once said, God is in the details. The second part of the law of preparation comes from the business writer Peter Drucker, who wrote that action without thinking is the cause of every failure. Action without taking the time to think through the details and their possible ramifications seems to be the underlying cause of most failures in life. Conversely, action preceded by thinking and planning is the cause of virtually every success. This doesn't mean that you'll automatically be successful if you plan thoroughly in advance, but it means that you must almost inevitably fail if you don't do it. The third part of this law comes from Benjamin Trigo who said, if it's not worth doing, it's not worth doing well. Details are important, but you need to think through the value and importance of each detail before you overcommit your time and resources to them. The eighth law of achievement is the law of forced efficiency. This law states that the more things you have to do in a limited space of time, the more you will be forced to work on your most important tasks. This is another way of saying that there's never enough time to do everything but there's always enough time to do the important things. The more you take on, the more likely it is that you'll be forced to think. Analyze and evaluate your tasks and activities in such a way that you spend your limited mental and physical energy on just those tasks that are most vital to your success. There are two parts to the law of forced efficiency. First, there will never be enough time to do everything that you have to do. The busier and more successful you become, the truer this statement will be. If you have lots of time to do your work, it means that you are underemployed, underpaid, and well along the low road to frustration and disappointment in your career. The fact is that you can only discover how much you can do by trying to do too much. You can only find out how far you can go by going too far. You discover how much you can take on by taking on more than you can do. The second part of this law, which is the key question in personal efficiency and time management, is to ask yourself continually. What is the most valuable use of my time right now? Always keep yourself on track and focus on your most important responsibilities by asking yourself, hour by hour and minute by minute, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? The ninth law of achievement is the law of decision. It says that every great leap forward in life is preceded by a clear decision that leads to action. While all high achieving men and women tend to be very decisive in their thoughts and actions, they think things through carefully, decide exactly what they want, and then make clear decisions and take action to make those decisions a reality. In your life, you've had several experiences where you've been unsure of what to do, and you've resolved your dilemma by making a clear decision one way or the other. In looking back, you'll probably find that that was the turning point for you, 
and that everything else flowed from the decision. The ability to make good decisions is one of the most critical thinking skills of the successful man or woman. In fact, in one study, the careers of managers who were promoted rapidly were compared to those of managers who were passed over for promotion. Researchers found that the one distinguishing behavior between the two groups was that the more rapidly promoted, managers were more decisive in doing their jobs. The interesting fact that came out of this study was that, given written tests with hypothetical problems, both sets of managers were equally accurate in their answers. The more successful managers, however, on the job, were willing to make decisions based on their answers, while the unsuccessful managers were afraid to, for fear of making a mistake. The very act of being decisive can be the critical factor that enables you to take command of a situation and move ahead more rapidly. We found that high achievers are not necessarily those who make the right decisions every time, but they are those people who make their decisions right. They accept feedback and self-correct. They take in new information and they change if necessary. But they are always decisive. Always moving forward. Never wishy-washy or vacillating in their attitudes toward life. The first part of the law of decision is simply this. Act boldly, and unseen forces will come to your aid. It seems that when you grasp a situation and step forward courageously, a series of unseen forces, most of which are explained by the laws in this program, seem to emerge and help you to achieve your goals. Your very willingness to take action, rather than to delay or procrastinate, seems to bring universal powers to your assistance. The second part of the Law of Decision comes from the wonderful book by Dorothea Branda, entitled Wake Up and Live. She wrote that the discovery that changed her life and the lives of thousands of others who heard it from her in her public talks was the simple success formula that says, act as if it were impossible to fail, and it shall be. When you imagine that your success will be guaranteed if you simply take action and you act on that premise, a whole series of forces begins to support you and move you toward the attainment of your desires. So when in doubt, act as if it were impossible to fail and push forward. The third part of the law of decision comes from the famous Nike commercial, which says, just do it. These three words really summarize one of the great formulas for success. Just do it. So be decisive, go for it, take a chance, act boldly, and unseen forces will come to your aid. The tenth law of achievement is the law of creativity. It says that every advance in human life begins with an idea in the mind of one person. It's ideas that you generate that enable you to solve your problems, overcome your obstacles, and achieve your goals. Ideas are the keys to the future. It's hardly possible for you to achieve anything of note, except to the degree to which you think and do something new and different from what's been done before. All it takes is a small innovation to lay the foundation for a fortune and great success in life. The first part of this law says that your ability to generate constructive ideas is, to all intents and purposes, unlimited. Therefore, your future potential is unlimited as well. Ideas are a mode of transportation, a vehicle that you can use to take you from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. Your job is simply to generate as many ideas as possible, to evaluate them carefully against your current goals, and then to take action on them. There's virtually no obstacle in life that you cannot overcome with the power of thought, with the power of creative concentration, with the power of ideas. The second part of this law comes from Napoleon Hill, who said in his famous words, Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Your mind is structured in such a way that you cannot, at the same time, have an idea and not also have the ability to bring that idea into reality. The very existence of an idea in your conscious mind means that you have within you and around you the capacity to achieve it. The only question you have to ask yourself is, how badly do I want it? The third part of the law of creativity comes from Napoleon Bonaparte who said, imagination rules the world. Everything you see around you is the result of what was initially a single idea in the mind of a single person. Our entire world started from thought, brought into reality. The fourth and final part of this law comes from Einstein, who said simply that, imagination is more important than facts. There have been countless occasions in your life, in the lives of others, where the facts say one thing, but your ideas and creative energy enable you to do something completely different. Virtually every important turning point in your life will be marked by an idea that you've had at that time and moment. 
All great changes in human life and human destiny begin with an idea that causes you to see things differently and to take action that you would not have taken in the absence of that idea. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever your situation, you have the creative capacity in the form of an infinite ability to generate ideas to solve any problem and achieve any goal. It's up to you. The eleventh law of achievement is the law of flexibility. This law says that success is best achieved when you are clear about the goal, but flexible about the process of getting there. This is one of the most important conclusions ever reached by high-achieving men and women. When you set a clear goal for yourself and make a plan, you usually have a fairly good idea of what it is you have to do to get whatever it is you want to achieve. However, a thousand things can change, each of which will require alterations in your plan of action. The most optimistic and enthusiastic people are those who are open, flexible and fluid in the face of the inevitable, and the myriad changes required as they move toward the accomplishment of something that's important to them. The first part of the law of flexibility is that the experience of resistance and frustration is often an indication that you're doing the wrong thing. Whenever you feel that you're butting your head against the wall and not making progress, step back and re-examine your plan. Be sure that the goal you're working toward is still the goal that you desire, and then sit down and make better plans. Take the mentality of a computer programmer. When he designs a computer program, he knows that the program will be full of defects when it's completed. No computer program ever works perfectly the first time it's tried. However, the programmer accepts this as a factor of life and then begins to go back through the program step by step to remove the defects. When the programmer is finished, the program will operate perfectly. By the same token, whenever your plans don't seem to be bearing fruit, look in the mirror, re-examine your plans, and redesign them until you have faultless plans that work and move you forward without anxiety and frustration. The second part of the law of flexibility is that you are only as free in life as the number of developed options that you have available to you. Your freedom and happiness are largely determined by the number of alternatives that you've developed in case your first choice doesn't work. The more thoroughly developed your options and alternatives, the more freedom you have if one course of action doesn't develop as you expected. You're fully prepared to switch. In my courses on decision-making, once the decision has been reached, I encourage the participants to ask the question, what else would be a good decision in this situation? The very exercise of developing alternatives enables you to think more clearly and can be a major contributor to the level of achievement that you experience. The third part of the law of flexibility is that crisis is change trying to take place. Whenever you're experiencing a crisis or difficulty of any kind, step back for a moment and ask yourself, what change is trying to take place that is being signaled to me as a result of this crisis? You may be having a crisis in your work, in your personal relationships, with your health, or with your business. In almost every case, a crisis is an indication that something is wrong, and that pursuing the same course would be unwise. So, what is the change that's trying to take place in your life right now? The fourth part of the law of flexibility is that errant assumptions lie at the root of every failure. Almost every failure you have will be based on an incorrect assumption that you've made and accepted without question. It's always a good exercise to clarify your assumptions, especially when things aren't going as well as you want. So, first, what are your explicit assumptions? These are the ones you're clearly aware of. Second, what are your implicit assumptions? These are the ones you may be accepting without question. What if your most cherished assumptions were wrong? What changes would this dictate? How flexible and fluid would you have to be to redirect your course of action if something you assume as fact turned out not to be true at all? Whenever you make the right decisions and achieve your goals on schedule, it's because the assumptions you were operating on turned out to be true. Many people go broke starting their own businesses because they assume there's a big enough market for their product or service. They also assume customers will switch from their current suppliers to them for no other reason than being in the marketplace. Sometimes they assume they have the talents and skills to provide the product or service at a competitive price and still make a profit. Your willingness to question your assumptions, to test them against reality, with the willingness to accept the possibility that you could be wrong, is the kind of attitude that will ultimately lead you to great achievement. Flexibility is perhaps the most important quality necessary for success in our competitive society for the rest of the century and beyond. The twelfth law of achievement is the law of persistence. This law says that your ability to persist in the face of setbacks and disappointments is your measure of your belief in yourself and your ability to succeed. 
Persistence is the iron quality of success. Sometimes, your willingness to persist is your greatest asset, and is the quality that separates you from everyone else. Sometimes, the strongest thing you have going for you is your ability to persist longer than anyone else. The first part of the law of persistence is simply that persistence is self-discipline in action. It's when you face the inevitable setbacks, delays, disappointments, and temporary defeats, and you continue to persist in spite of them, that you demonstrate to yourself and others that you have the character of self-discipline and self-mastery that is absolutely indispensable for the great success that you desire. Churchill summarized the second part of the law of persistence when he said, Never give up, never, never give up. Churchill believed, and he proved throughout his lifetime, that bulldog tenacity in the face of what appeared to be overwhelming defeat was often the critical quality that turned that defeat into victory. Earlier, I mentioned that intense burning desire is essential to overcoming obstacles and achieving great goals. For your desire to be intense enough, your goals must be purely personal. They must be goals that you choose for yourself, rather than goals that someone else wants for you, or that you want to achieve to please someone in your life. In goal setting, for the process to be effective, you must be perfectly selfish about what you really, really want for yourself. This doesn't mean that you cannot do things for other people, either at home or at work. This simply means that in setting goals for your life, you start with yourself and work forward. The great question, one of the most important questions in goal setting, is this. What do I really want to do with my life? If you could do, be, or have anything at all in life, what would it be? Remember, you can't hit a target you can't see. You should return to this question over and over again in the months and years ahead. What do I really want to do with my life? In determining your true goals, you start with your vision, your values, and your ideals. When you begin, these will often feel a bit like fantasies detached from reality. However, now your job is to make them concrete, like designing a dream house on paper. You start with your general goals and then move to more specific goals. What are your three most important goals in your business and career right now? What are your three most important financial goals right now? What are your three most important family or relationship goals right now? What are your three most important health and fitness goals right now? The flip side of the above questions is for you to ask, what are my three biggest worries or concerns in life right now? What bothers you, worries you, concerns you, and preoccupies you in your day-to-day -day life? What aggravates or irritates you? What is robbing you of happiness more than anything else? As a friend of mine often asks, where does it hurt? Once you have identified your biggest problems, worries, or concerns, ask yourself, what are the ideal solutions to each of these problems? How could I eliminate these problems or worries immediately? What is the fastest and most direct way to solve this problem? In 1142, William of Ockham, a British philosopher, proposed a method of problem solving that has come to be referred to as Occam's Razor. This way of thinking has become famous and popular throughout the ages. What Occam said was that the simplest and most direct solution requiring the fewest number of steps is usually the correct solution to any problem. Many people make the mistake of overcomplicating goals and problems, but the more complicated the solution, the less likely it is ever to be implemented, and the longer the time it will take to get any results. Your aim should be to simplify the solution and go directly to the goal as quickly as possible. For example, many people tell me that they would like to double their incomes. If they are in sales, I ask them, what is the fastest and most direct way to double your income? After they have come up with a series of suggestions, I give them what I consider to be the best answer. Double the amount of time that you spend face to face with qualified prospects. The most direct way to increase your sales has always been the same. Spend more time with better prospects. If you don't upgrade your skills or change anything else about what you are doing, but you double the number of minutes that you spend face to face with prospects each day, you will probably double your sales income. According to studies that go back as far as 1928, the average salesperson today spends 90 minutes each day face to face with prospects. The highest paid salespeople spend two or three times that amount. They organize their days efficiently to assure that they spend more minutes in the presence of people who can and will buy their products or services. And the more time they spend with prospects and customers, the more skilled they become at selling, the better they get, the more they sell, and the more they earn, and in less time. If you examine your work, you will find that 20% of what you do accounts for 80% of the value of all the things you do.
In my advanced coaching programs, we teach our clients to identify those 20% of activities that contribute the very most value and then do twice as many of them. Instead of using their intelligence to juggle their time and accomplish a greater number of tasks, we teach them to do fewer tasks but tasks of higher value. Some of our clients double their productivity and subsequently their income in as little as 30 days with this approach, even if they have been working for many years in the same position. Always look for the simplest and most direct way to get from where you are to where you want to go. Look for the solution that has the fewest number of steps. And most of all, take action. Get going. Get busy. Develop a sense of urgency. The best ideas in the world are of no value until they are implemented. As the poet said, the saddest words of mice and men are these. It might have been. In determining your true goals, use the magic wand technique. Imagine that you have a magic wand that you can wave over a particular area of your life. When you wave this magic wand, your wishes come true. Wave a magic wand over your business and career. If you could have any three wishes in your work, what would they be? Wave a magic wand over your financial life. If you could have any three wishes in your financial life, what would they be? Wave a magic wand over your family life and your relationships. If you could have any three wishes in this area, what would they be? If your family life were ideal in every respect, what would it look like? Wave a magic wand over your health and fitness. If you could have any three wishes with regard to your body and your physical well-being, what would they be? If your health were perfect, how would it be different from today? Wave a magic wand over your skills and abilities. If you could have any three skills or abilities developed to a high level, what would they be? In what areas would you like to excel? The magic wand technique is fun on the one hand but quite revealing on the other. Whenever you imagine that you have a magic wand, your true goals in that area emerge. You can also use this exercise for other people who are not sure about what they want or where they are going. It is amazing what comes out when you ask this question. Here is another goal-setting question that reflects your true values. Imagine that you went to a doctor for a full medical checkup. Your doctor calls you back a few days later and says, I have good news for you and I have bad news for you. The good news is that for the next six months, you are going to live the healthiest and most energetic life you could possibly imagine. The bad news is that at the end of 180 days, because of an incurable illness, you will drop stone dead. If you learned today that you only had six months left to live, how would you spend your last six months on earth? Who would you spend the time with? Where would you go? What would you strive to complete? What would you do more of or less of? When you ask yourself this question, what comes to the top of your mind will be a reflection of your true values. Your answer would almost always include the most important people in your life. Very few people in this situation would say, well, I'd like to get back to the office and return a few phone calls. In setting your true goals, this exercise is an extension of imagining that you have no limitations. Make up a dream list. A dream list is a list of everything you would like to be, have or do in your life sometime in the future if you had no limitations at all. Mark Victor Hansen, co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, recommends that you sit down with a pad of paper and make a list of at least 100 goals that you want to accomplish in your lifetime. Then imagine that you have all the time, all the money, all the friends, all the abilities, and all the resources necessary to achieve these goals. Let yourself dream and fantasize. Just write down everything that you would like to have as if you had no limitations at all. The amazing discovery you will make is that within 30 days after writing out this list of 100 dreams, remarkable things will begin to happen in your life, and your goals will start to be achieved at a rate that you cannot even imagine today. This seems to happen to virtually everyone who has written down at least 100 goals. You should give it a try. You could be amazed at the results. Here is another goal-setting question. If you were to receive a million dollars tomorrow, cash, tax-free, how would you change your life? What would you do differently? What would you get into or out of? What would you do more of or less of? What would be the first thing you would do if you learned today that you had just received one million dollars cash? This is a way of asking the question, how would you change your life if you were completely free to choose? The primary reason that we stay in situations that are not the best for us is because we fear change. But when you imagine that you have all the money that you will ever need to do or be whatever you want, your true goals often emerge. For example, if you were currently in the wrong job for you, the idea of winning a large amount of money would cause you to think about quitting that job immediately. 
If you were in the right job for you, however, winning a lot of money would not affect your career choice at all. So ask yourself, what would I do if I won a million dollars cash, tax-free tomorrow? Here's another question to help you clarify your true goals. What have you always wanted to do, but been afraid to attempt? When you look around your world, and you look at other people who are doing things that you admire, what have you always wanted to do as well, but have been afraid of taking the chance? Have you wanted to start your own business? Have you wanted to run for public office? Have you wanted to embark on a new career? What have you always wanted to do but been afraid to attempt? In setting goals for your life, short and long term, you should continually ask yourself, what do I most enjoy doing in each area of my life? For instance, if you could do just one thing all day long in your work, what would it be? If you could do any job or full-time activity all the time without pay, what would it be? What sort of work or activity gives you the greatest joy and satisfaction? The psychologist Abraham Maslow identified what he called peak experiences. Those moments or times when the individual feels the happiest, most elated, and exhilarated. One of your aims in life is to enjoy as many peak experiences as possible. You achieve this by thinking back and identifying those moments of peak experience in your past, and by imagining how you could repeat them in your present and future. What have been your happiest moments in life up to now? How could you have more of those moments in the future? What do you really love to do? You should have goals for social and community involvement and contribution as well. Think about what kind of difference you would like to make in your world. What organizations, causes, needs, or social problems would you like to work on or in? What changes would you like to see? Who is there who is less fortunate than you that you would like to help? If you were independently wealthy, what causes would you support most of all? What could you do today to begin making a difference in your world? Don't wait until some future date when everything will be ideal. Instead, start today in some way. One of the most important areas of goal setting is your financial life. If you can earn and accumulate all the money you need, you could probably achieve most of your non-financial goals faster and easier than you can today. If your life were ideal, how much? Money would you like to earn each month, each year? How much would you like to save and invest each month and year? How much would you like to be worth sometime in the future? What sort of estate would you like to accumulate by the time you retire, and when would you like that to be? Most people are hopelessly confused about their financial goals. But when you become absolutely clear about them for yourself, your ability to achieve them increases dramatically. When you are absolutely clear about what you want, you can then think about your goals most of the time, and the more you think about them, the faster they will materialize in your life. This process of asking yourself questions about your goals in each part of your life begins to clarify your thinking and make you a more focused and definite person. As Zig Ziglar says, you move from being a wandering generality to becoming a meaningful specific. Most of all, you reach the point where you can determine your major definite purpose in life. This is the springboard for great achievement and extraordinary accomplishment. Your major definite purpose will be the topic of the next chapter, and how to achieve it will be the subject of the chapters to come. Determine your true goals. Write down your three most important goals in life right now. What are your three most pressing problems or worries right now? If you want a million dollars cash tax-free tomorrow, what changes in your life would you make immediately? What do you really love to do? What gives you the greatest feelings of value, importance, and satisfaction? If you could wave a magic wand over your life and have anything you wanted, what would you wish for? How would you spend your time if you only had six months left to live? What would you really want to do with your life, especially if you had no limitations? How many times do you think that people try to achieve their new goals before they give up? The average is less than one time. Most people give up before they even make the first try. And the reason they give up is because of all the obstacles, difficulties, problems, and roadblocks that immediately appear as soon as you decide to do something you've never done before. The fact is that successful people fail far more often than unsuccessful people. Successful people try more things, fall down, pick themselves up, and try again over and over again before they win through. Unsuccessful people try a few things, and if they try at all, very soon quit, and go back to what they were doing before. You should expect to fail and fall short many times before you achieve your goals. You should look upon failure and temporary defeat as a part of the price you pay on your road to success. As Henry Ford once said, 
failure is merely an opportunity to more intelligently begin again. Once you have decided upon your goal, ask yourself, why am I not there already? What is holding me back? Why haven't I achieved that goal up to now? Identify all the obstacles that stand between you and your goal. Write down every single thing that you can think of that might be blocking you or slowing you down from moving ahead. Remember, you become what you think about most of the time. In the area of problems and difficulties, successful people have a particular way of thinking that we call solution orientation. Successful people think about solutions most of the time, while unsuccessful people think about problems and difficulties most of the time. Solution-oriented people are constantly looking for ways to get over, around, and past the obstacles that stand in their ways. Problem-oriented people talk continuously about their problems, about who or what caused them, how unhappy or angry they are, and how unfortunate it is that they have occurred. Between you and anything you want to accomplish, there will always be problems or obstacles of some kind. This is why success is sometimes defined as the ability to solve problems. Personal leadership is the ability to solve problems. Effectiveness is the ability to solve problems. While men and women who accomplish anything of importance are people who have developed the ability to solve the problems that stand between them and their goals. Fortunately, problem solving is a skill like riding a bicycle or typing with a typewriter which you can learn. And the more you focus on solutions, the more and better solutions will come to you. The better you get at solving problems, the faster you will be at solving each subsequent problem. And as you get better and faster at solving problems, you will attract even bigger and more expensive problems to solve. Eventually, you will be solving problems that can have significant financial consequences for you and others. This is the way the world works. The fact is that you have the ability to solve any problem or to overcome any obstacle on the path to your goal, if you desire the goal intensely enough. You have within you right now all the intelligence and ability you will ever need to overcome any obstacle that could possibly hold you back. One of the most important breakthroughs in thinking in the last few decades was described by Eliyahu Goldratt in his book The Goal, as the theory of constraints. This theory says that between you and anything you want to accomplish, there is a constraint or limiting factor that determines how fast you get to where you want to go. For example, if you are driving down the freeway, and there is traffic construction that is narrowing all the cars into a single lane, this bottleneck or choke point becomes the constraint that determines how fast you get to your destination. The speed at which you pass through this bottleneck will largely determine the speed of your entire journey. In accomplishing any major goal, there is always a constraint or bottleneck you must get through as well. Your job is to identify it accurately, and then to focus all of your energies on alleviating that key constraint. Your ability to remove this bottleneck or deal with this limiting factor can help you move ahead faster than perhaps any other step you can take. The 80-20 rule applies to the constraints between you and your goals. This rule says that 80% of your constraints will be within yourself. Only 20% of your constraints will be outside of yourself, contained in other people and situations. To put it another way, it is you personally who is usually the major roadblock that is setting the speed at which you achieve any goal that you set for yourself. For most people, this is hard to accept. But superior people are more concerned with what is right, rather than who is right. Superior people are more concerned with the truth of the situation, and what they can do to solve the problem, than they are with protecting their egos. Ask yourself, what is it in me that is holding me back? Look deep within yourself and identify the key constraints in your personality, temperament, skills, abilities, habits, education, or experience that might be holding you back from achieving the goals that you have set for yourself. Ask the brutal questions. Be completely honest with yourself. The primary obstacles between you and your goals are usually mental. They are psychological and emotional in character. They are within yourself rather than within the situation around you. And it is with these mental obstacles that you must begin if you want to achieve everything that is possible for you. The two major obstacles to success and achievement are fear and doubt. It is first of all the fears of failure, poverty, loss, embarrassment, or rejection that hold the average person back from trying in the first place. This is why the average number of times that a person tries with a new goal is less than one. As soon as they think of the goal, these fears overwhelm them, and like a bucket of water on a small fire, extinguish their desire completely. The second mental obstacle closely aligned to fear is that of self-doubt. We doubt our own abilities. We compare ourselves unfavorably to others, and think that others are somehow better, 
smarter, and more competent than we are. We think, I'm not good enough. We feel inadequate and inferior to the challenges of achieving the great goals that we so much want to accomplish. Fortunately, if there is anything good about doubt and fear, it is that they are both learned emotions. Children come into the world with no doubts or fears at all, and whatever has been learned can be unlearned through practice and repetition. The primary antidotes to doubt and fear are courage and confidence. The higher your level of courage and confidence, the lower will be your levels of fear and doubt, and the less effect these negative emotions will have on your performance and behavior. The way that you develop courage and confidence is with knowledge and skill. Most fear and doubt arise out of ignorance and feelings of inadequacy of some kind. The more you learn the things you need to know to achieve your goals, the less fear you will feel on the one hand, and the more courage and confidence you will feel on the other. Think about learning to drive for the first time. You were probably extremely tense and nervous and made a lot of mistakes. You may have driven erratically and been a danger to yourself and others. But over time, as you mastered the knowledge and skills of driving, you became better and better, and your confidence increased. Today you can quite comfortably get into your car and drive across the country with no fear or worry at all. You are so confident at driving that you can do it well without even thinking about it. The same principles apply to any skills you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. Dr. Martin Seligman of the University of Pennsylvania spent more than 25 years studying the phenomenon of what he called learned helplessness. Seligman concluded that more than 80% of the population suffers from learned helplessness to some degree, and occasionally to a very high degree indeed. A person suffering from learned helplessness feels that he or she is incapable of achieving his or her goals or improving his or her life. The most common manifestation of learned helplessness is contained in the words, I can't. Whenever the victim of learned helplessness is offered an opportunity, possibility, or new goal, he immediately responds by saying, I can't. He then goes on to give all the reasons why a particular goal or objective is not possible for him. The way you get over this natural tendency to sell yourself short is by setting small goals, making plans, and working on them each day. In this way, you gradually develop greater courage and confidence, like building up a muscle. As you become more confident in yourself and your abilities, you can set even larger goals. Over time, your doubts and fears will weaken, and your courage and confidence will grow and become the dominant force in your thinking. Eventually, with a record of successes behind you, it won't be long before you become unstoppable. The second mental obstacle that you need to overcome is the comfort zone. Many people become complacent with their current situations. They become so comfortable in a particular job, relationship, salary, or level of responsibility that they become reluctant to make any changes at all, even for the better. The comfort zone is a major obstacle to ambition, desire, determination, and accomplishment. People who get stuck in a comfort zone, combined with learned helplessness, are almost impossible to help in any way. Don't let this happen to you. The way that you get out of your comfort zone and break loose from learned helplessness is by setting big, challenging goals. You then break these goals down into specific tasks, set deadlines, and work on them every day. Like an ice floe breaking up in the spring, doing the sluggishness and lethargy of learned helplessness and the comfort zone break up, and you begin moving faster and faster toward accomplishing more and more of what is possible for you. Once you have made a list of all the obstacles that are standing in the way of your achieving your major goals, organize the obstacles by priority. What is the largest single obstacle? If you could wave a magic wand and remove one major obstacle from your path, which one obstacle, if removed, would help you the most in moving ahead more rapidly? Management consultant Ian Mitroff has an interesting set of observations with regard to problem solving and the removal of obstacles. He says that whatever the problem, define it several different ways before you attempt to solve it. Beware of any problem for which there is only one definition or only one solution. When you ask the question with regard to your goal, why am I not there already? What answer comes to mind? What is holding you back? What is standing in your way? It is at this point that you have to drill down to determine the correct obstacle. Before you begin taking steps to remove it, you do this by asking the question, what else could be the problem? After each definition of the problem, you could start off by stating the problem in this way. I'm not earning enough money. What else is the problem? I'm not contributing enough value to be worth more money. 
What else could be the problem? I'm not good enough at what I do to be capable of getting results that are worth more than I'm earning today. Once you have determined the major obstacle that is holding you back, rewrite that obstacle as a positive goal. For example, you could now say, my goal is to continually upgrade my skills and abilities so that I am in the top 10% of money earners in my field. You then make a list of all the things that you could do to upgrade your knowledge and skills, improve your time management, increase your efficiency and effectiveness, and make more sales for your company. You set deadlines and measures next to each step in your strategy to achieve excellence in your field. You then select one key task and take action on it immediately. From then on, you hold your own feet to the fire. You become your own taskmaster. You discipline and drive yourself to do the things that you need to do to become the kind of person you need to become in order to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself. This exercise of identifying what is holding you back and then setting a clear written goal to remove that obstacle puts you back in control of your own life. By following through on your resolution, you virtually guarantee your ultimate success and the achievement of almost any goal you can set for yourself. If you have any questions or concerns about the accuracy of your problem definition, discuss it with someone you know and trust. Put your ego aside, invite honest feedback and criticism, and be open to the possibility that you have fundamental flaws and weaknesses that are standing in the way of your realizing your full potential. Be brutally honest with yourself. Once your problem or obstacle is clear to you, ideas, opportunities, and answers will come to you from various sources. You will begin to attract into your life all kinds of resources that will help you to overcome the obstacle or difficulty, either within yourself or within the situation around you, and move you more rapidly toward your goal. Remember the old poem, For every problem under the sun, there is a solution, or there is none. If there is a solution, go and find it. If there isn't, never mind it. For every problem or obstacle that is standing between you and what you want to accomplish, there is a solution of some kind, somewhere. Your job is to be absolutely clear about what sets the speed at which you achieve your goal, and then to focus your time and attention on alleviating that constraint by removing your major obstacle. You will often make more progress in a few months than the average person might make in several years. Your thoughts and feelings about yourself and what you can do or not do are the sum total result of a lifetime of experience and conditioning, and usually have little relationship to what is truly possible for you. In personal development, there is a principle or a law of becoming that simply says that each person is in a continual process of evolving and growing in the direction of their dominant thoughts. Your body is also in a state of becoming, with a normal rate of cell death and replenishment. You essentially have a brand new body every seven years. Whereas your physical evolution is affected by the food you consume, your mental evolution and becoming are largely determined by the thoughts you feed your mind. The law of concentration says that anything you dwell upon grows in your reality. Thoughts you think about long enough and hard enough eventually become a part of your mental processes, exerting their influence and power on your attitude and behavior. If you constantly think thoughts of boldness, courage, and self-assertion, you become progressively bolder and more self-assured. Similarly, if you dwell on the person you would like to become with the qualities you aspire to have, you implant those deeply into your subconscious mind, where they become part of your ongoing evolution. What you habitually think about eventually becomes a part of your character and personality. You are essentially a self-made individual, shaped by the thoughts you have allowed to preoccupy your mind. However, for most people, thinking the thoughts they would like to think about to become the person they aspire to be is too big a leap. Many continue to think and talk about exactly what they don't want to happen only to be constantly amazed when exactly what they were hoping to avoid happens to them again and again. One of the most profound discoveries in human history is that thought is creative. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind, like begets like. Your thoughts become your realities. You become what you think about most of the time. You cannot harbor one kind of thought and experience a different kind of existence. This law of cause and effect works perfectly everywhere and always for everyone. Developing unshakable self-confidence begins with taking full, complete, systematic and purposeful control over the contents of your conscious mind. Discipline yourself to think consistently about only the things that you desire and to resolutely keep your mind off the things that you fear. All of life is from the inside out. Your outer world will be a reflection of your inner world. True happiness and success come from living your life in harmony with the laws that govern your being 
even though these laws are invisible. Just like the law of gravity, which is also invisible but to be violated only at your own peril. Happy people are those who obey and follow the laws of nature and live their lives consistent with those laws. If you want to enjoy self-confidence on the outside, you must practice complete integrity on the inside. The foundation of self-confidence is living your life consistent with your innermost values and principles, while thinking and acting in harmony with your highest aspirations. Men and women with the most rock-solid self-confidence are those who are absolutely clear about what they believe to be right and good, and who live their lives consistent with these values. Your true values are only expressed in your actions. You can tell what you truly believe by observing what you do, especially in situations where you have to make a choice under stress. Your choices of actions tell you unerringly who you really are. This brings us to the little-known mental principle called the Law of Reversibility, which says that actions consistent with particular values or beliefs actually lead to the thoughts and feelings that would have triggered the actions. The keys to developing unshakable self-confidence are self-control, self-mastery, and self-discipline. Self-confidence can come directly by behaving in a self-confident manner, but it comes more often indirectly by doing and saying the things that lead to self-confidence. And the most important self-development behavior is living consistently with your highest values at every opportunity. Each time you do this, you will feel positive and happy about yourself, and your behaviors will further crystallize in your personality, making you an exceptional human being in the process of becoming.